Hey everybody and welcome back. In this video we're going to look at creating an underwater scene. Before I get started, a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting the notification icon, that really helps me out. And a huge thank you to my patrons and channel members, your names will be running across the screen at the end of the video. So what the important things that we need to look at in this scene are what we can do in the studio and the things that it's going to be much, much quicker to do in Adobe Photoshop or whatever image editing software you have that you want to use. And I'm just going to put some images up on the screen that will show the effect of the light on the sea bottom. And this is definitely an effect that I feel is going to be much quicker to just do it in post-production. And I think the same can be said for the sea surface and the god rays coming down from it. You could easily enough achieve those effects in uh, Dash Studio, but the increase in render time would make that unfeasible. It's much quicker just to do it in Photoshop. Just by using stock images, it's really that much simpler. So really all we need to do in Dash Studio is put our seabed. As you can see, I've got a seabed here and I've used a shark model instead of a character just for ease of really ease of demonstration. And um, the most important thing that I would say is to remember that the sea changes the colors. So the colors that you're seeing in the scene here are not going to be the finished colors. And the brightness of the light, in my humble opinion, is a little bit too much. So I've got my plane here. This is a simple plane. It's casting light. If I were to rotate up and then move up, you'd be able to see it. It's up there. There it is. It's about six meters off the ground at the moment. And that's all it's doing. It's our single light source. Because if you think about what you see in an underwater scene, there are no light sources underneath or around. They or the sunlight all comes from above. So unless you've got bioluminescent creatures around that are casting light elsewhere, this is all you're going to really need to do. So the next thing we need to do is make sure that this is actually a good size and distance. So I've, I've, I've got it too close. So I'm going to try maybe going to 800 meters and seeing what difference that makes. As you can see, that's made it quite a bit darker and the shadow is starting to form on the floor. So I'm going to say come up to 950 and see what that does. And that's more roughly where I want to be. Certainly in terms of the shadow, because obviously the sunlight is diffused by the sea surface, which does sort of thin out the shadows a little bit. But there are still shadows on the sea bottom with objects that are close to it. So what we want to do here is we really want to just render this scene out as it is and then work on it in Photoshop to create the effect that we're after. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so here we are in Adobe Photoshop with our rendered out image. And as you can see, there's some weird stuff going on in the seabed here, but that's absolutely fine because the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer like so. And then we're going to take our paint fill tool and we're going to find a really nice deep dark blue. And we're just going to pop that in the back there. And that's just to make <laughs> the background nice and dark because what we're going to do eventually is kind of add some depth mist to this because obviously underwater things get really murky really quickly even in the cleanest water visibility is you know only a few feet at the be at best you know you're talking 20 or 30 yards it's not going to be able to see a huge huge way off into the distance so the next thing you need to do really is to get yourself onto the internet and find a few images to use as references and to find something to paste in the top of your scene. So I've already grabbed something that I'm going to use here and you can obviously use stock images. Um, I would advise that you get proper stock images and pay for them so that um, you're completely covered copyright. But I'm just doing this for demonstration. So I'm just going to grab some random things from Google images. and We're just going to drag this up so that it fills the top of our image and then come down like this 
and then immediately I'm going to create a layer mask and I'm going to paint out the majority of this image, certainly everything below there, like that. And then we're just going to be really careful and make sure that our shark is covered. And again, don't forget that the background of this is going to be misty, so we don't need to necessarily worry about the fact that there's a big color difference. And if it's really that big of an issue, what we can do is we can hit out there, make sure that we've got our image selected. We're going to go for that, that color instead, select our background, and then we can just fill it with that. And then the color kind of blurs nicely. So you're holding down the Alt key to bring out the paint dropper tool. And then that gives us a color that is more suitable for what we're doing. Now the pattern on the seabed from the reference image that I used is quite difficult. So what I'm going to suggest is that was a reference image I was using for lighting. <laughs> so what I'm going to suggest is that you get yourself onto the internet again and find yourself an image that has a really solid pattern that's sort of similar to the, I want to say similar to the background uh, angle where the camera angle is pointed at the seabed because you want it to be fairly close so that it doesn't look completely bizarre now I've found something here so I'm just gonna save that from the tinter webs and I'm gonna drag it onto my canvas like that and this image is almost entirely the seabed so there we go we've got that and then we're gonna drag this over there like so and then we're going to change this blend mode to maybe screen and then we can drop the opacity down a little bit and if screen doesn't work we can always change it to something like overlay instead that works and then again we're going to pop a layer mask on here grab our paintbrush tool choose pure black and then we're just going to paint that out across there like so and as you can see this is already starting now to take shape just by messing around with the image in Photoshop we've already got pretty good effect going on here now all we need to do is just create the effect in the background which is going to be our fog so what we're going to do is we're going to again select our background color like this and then we're going to create a new layer over the top of everything and we're going to, I'm going to say, let's create a selection. So we're going to select our shark layer. We're going to use our quick select tool because I don't think we're going to need to use any funky snazzery here because it's a PNG. So most of it's already transparent. So we're going to select this part like that. And then we hold down the Alt key and we can get rid of any unwanted bits and pieces it hasn't got to be perfect there we go so now if we go into select a mask we can just quickly grab the refine tool to refine those edges a little bit anywhere that it looks like it's very scratchy and we just hit ok there now we're going to create a layer mask like so and then we're going to press ctrl i to invert the layer mask now the shark will not be painted over with everything else that we do so all we're going to do is we're going to use our background color so we're going to select this and we're going to fill the image like that now we're going to use our layer mask again and we're simply going to remove the nearby stuff from it you could do this with a depth mask if you really wanted to but it does seem like a bit of overkill so we're going to drop our opacity down to about 30 percent like so and that way we can make sure that we're not messing things about too much now notice what i'm doing is that i'm actually making sure that this because the top is a light source there's going to be that's going to be a lot clearer than anything else so really in in realistic terms we're getting to the point where we need to drop our opacity down a little bit more to like eight percent and then we can just drag that across to smooth that effect out a little bit 
and then we've got something akin to this which is brilliant so the last effect that we want to do is sort of beef up those light rays a little bit so we're going to create a new object we're going to select the white color with our paintbrush and we're going to go for 100 percent opacity like so and then all we're going to do is we're going to do white speckles just going to tap loads of times white speckles all around this area like this that's good for me i'm happy with that and then we're going to go into filter and we're going to go to blur and we're going to go to motion blur and we can change that actually no let's try a radial blur instead blur give a radial blur and we're going to change it to zoom and we're going to yank up the amounts quite a bit and we're going to move this to the top center of our image like that perhaps not quite enough so we can undo that and we can go back in and we can just experiment with this until we have what we're after so that's still a little bit off so I'll tell you what we'll do if we grab our move tool gonna drag those down a little bit and then we'll try it again That should give us more or less the effect we're after and we're just going to rank yank up the amount to 100 and see what happens there we go that's sort of giving us the effects we're after but i'm still not happy with that so what i'm going to do instead is i'm going to control z like this in fact i'm going to delete that entirely and i'm going to start again with a different method so if that first method doesn't get you the results you want do not fear we're going to drop the opacity of our brush down to about 80 and then we're just going to it doesn't have to be perfect because most of it's not going to be visible anyway and we can just drag some of these god rays out for ourselves like that and then we can go to filter blur and we can try gaussian blur and just yank up the amount quite a bit I would say not quite that much and you can experiment with different width lines as well say if you wanted some really fat ones you could come down with a couple of those as well try some really thin ones for those little tiny streaks there we go and if we go back into our blur gallery we can do back to our Gaussian blur and we can yank this up so that it's nice and high for me and then we're going to change the blend mode to soft light and we can reduce the opacity if we need to and then all we're going to do is we're going to create a layer mask like that and we're going to just delete the god rays from the area where the shark is so we yank that back up to 100 increase this amount again and as you can see it's not perfect so what I might do is I might come back to this layer mask here, drag that into there, just hit yes, by using the Alt key. And then in the layer mask, we're just going to add our white color to the top, which is where the God rays really need to be. because it's a soft effect it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect but we don't want to obviously make it too obvious around the shark so we're just going to do that there we go and that really is all there is to it to create an underwater scene you can add, you can go from here you can add your color balance adjustment layer so we've got our, our layer here and we can go to our color balance and we can change some of our highlights and shadows to make the scene more blue alternatively you could add a curves layer which 
which allows you to increase the greenness or reduce it depending on what you're looking for but really that's all there is to it so i hope that answered any questions that you might have let me know what you think in the comments below thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one take care of yourselves guys bye bye